Welcome to the most realist fishing challenge I've done in a while. Everybody say welcome back to Bog. What, you're not in the mood? I got a challenge video for you today. But before you go and hit like next video, stick with me because it's a Mikey Ball style challenge video. We're out on a lake I've never ever been on. We're on Lake Normandy in Middle Tennessee. It's a smaller lake. Um, water's a little bit dingy because there's been some rain, but moderately clear. Water temps in the, I don't know, low to mid 70s. So still pretty warm, kind of an early fall deal. But a lot of you guys asked in the videos, how do you find fish in fall? And like I said, I'm no pro. But what we're gonna do today is we're literally gonna put that question to the test. We're gonna run around this lake, gonna look at structures, gonna look at different kinds of features kind of on the shoreline, you know, what you're looking for cover-wise to catch some bass, especially in early fall, and analyze some of the baits you can use to approach some of those structures as well as that cover. So come along with me, I'm gonna walk you through everything. Bog's gonna hang out with us. Bog, can I at least get a high five? Can I get a high five for fall fishing? Oh God. It looks like we need to catch some bass. Let's go have some fun. These are the days that makes you thankful to have a GPS. <laughs> I can't see anything. So we had a bit of a fog delay, as you can see. But I wanted to tell you real quick kind of the lures and the baits that I have rigged up because we're on a new lake So you sort of need to be prepared for everything and I am guilty of it. I'm sure you are too I'm the hundred rod plus 20 rods in the rod locker kind of guy. I gotta have a rod for every single bait It's kind of OCD, but that's the way I approach it I tried to rig up a sort of range of stuff most of it mimicking bait like such as shad such as small minnows things along those lines but I wanted to be able to fish anywhere from two to three foot of water all the way down to 20. I kind of looked at some lake maps and that's what in general I assumed it would be. I got a 5XD for bumping kind of rock and that. I have a multi-blade three quarter ounce spinner bait, a buzz bait for some of that shallow cover, the cane walker which you guys have seen a bunch. I love that thing in fall and then um, a little frit side down there. Uh, there seems to be a lot of rock and stuff on this lake so if I want to bounce off of rocks on a point or if there's a little bit of brush and I want to run a crankbait through it all of them mimicking shad mimicking bait on my more like drag oriented or finesse side gotta have some kytex tied up I got that on a 3 8 ounce ball head that's one of my fall killers um, just got a standard Texas rig just in case I want to drag around um, a half ounce football jig it's a finesse football jig with one of my custom tied skirts pretty cool deal right there and a, a little uh, flappy daddy and uh, underspin yeah it, like I said 400 rods underspin right there um, a Ned rig and then I got a drop shot rig drop shots one of those sneaky ones where uh, there's a lot of bait and oftentimes dragging presentations don't work but a, a drop shot is sort of it suspends the bait up off the bottom and that tends to be key in fall because they're fo so focused on bait that really the only dragging rigs you can catch fish on are ones that put the bait up off the bottom and then back here I got a range of thing I got a little lighter Kytec um, I got a chatter bait uh, a little small quarter ounce red eye shad and then a jig that's a nickels half ounce just a flipping jig on 20 pound fluorocarbon just in case it looks like there's some trees in the water over here so if if I'm going down the bank and I want to, you know, throw a buzz bait at it twice or something along those lines, take a spinner bait off of it, but then I want to actually put something like deep inside the cover, kind of pop that bait up. You tend to get some bigger bites doing that. Don't get a lot of bites this time of year doing it, but it, I love to flip, so I want to have that option. That's a bag, y'all. So I think. Yep. Nice. First fish of the day, gentlemen. On a little drop shot with a robo worm. Morning dern. Ain't very big, but that's why you get it started. Thank you for biting my offering. Hey, little guy. What we're doing is just kind of investigating some of the, the points. You can see we're on a point right here, and um, there's a little bit of brush on it, a little bit of rock, and I'm just trying to get some bites to get some information. Fish on. Feels like a little bit better one. Yep. Nice. Turn off the brush. 
right off a point, right off the brush. It's kind of interesting. Pink one does it again. Yeah, that's a fat old spot. Look at that thing. Interesting. No wonder you ate the pink worm. <laughs> that's pretty cool. So we're gonna do a little bit of idling and see if we can't just, maybe not identify exactly where the fish are at, but understand the lake a little bit better. We got a point right here. Let me zoom out a little. You can see kind of the point. We've already idled across it a little bit. But we're basically trying to see, it looks like there's some sort of, uh, what do you call them, man-made structures that are put out here. And then we're looking for congregations of, of bait, like where they're at depth-wise and where they're at on the point. Are they way up on a point? Are they way back in the pocket behind the point? Are they more towards like the tip falling off into deeper water? So we're gonna idle this thing and take a look. And there's all the bait. You see all the bait balls? That's 21, we're in about 15 to 21 feet of water and then all that bait showed up all balled up like that. So surprisingly, it almost seems like the fish are a little deeper than what I thought they would be. So that's kind of the range. What I do is I use that to sort of say, this is the range that I'm gonna look at the most stuff in on the lake. I'm gonna look at that 14 to 20 foot kind of water column. Got him. Oh, son of a gun. Missed him. He freaking crunched it. Uh, just in a little, we're in like a little shade kind of cut. And um, I was just idling by and I was actually scanning the point. And I'm like, damn, that looks good, dude. Like there, there's probably, when the water's low, there's probably a little flowing right there. And I got a little, um, this cane walker deal. I'm like, let me, cause what happens is, is the bait kind of, gets in these shadows and the, it'll actually relate to the shadows almost like it relates to a tree or something like that jacob kind of taught me that jacob wall um he fishes that the mlf uh pro circuit but uh, we'll see it. i don't know if there's a bunch of fish but there's one bite let's see if we can get them to go again Oh, that's a giant speck, dude. That is a giant speck. Look at that thing. Well, we can take him home and have a, a fish fry. I need to mark the brush pile he was sitting on because there's about 400 of them down there. It's always important to mark stuff as you're fishing because sometimes like it doesn't play a role maybe right at that moment, but check this out. There's like an old kind of like road bed kind of deal down there. And then I'm gonna show you something super cool, but it kind of juts out right from that dock right over there, but definitely something that they'll use in spring to, to kind of move up. But right behind it, I found a bunch of freaking crappie, dude, and I found a killer brush pile. A lot of times, a lot of these homeowners will drop their like brush or their Christmas trees and that right off their docks, and I caught a crappie off of it. Cool, not what we're looking for, but it's something to note because they'll definitely use that kind of stuff as we get further into winter. That, that sort of semi-offshore structure, we're back in a pocket. There's a bunch of bait back here, but check out how this thing looks on the graph. This is the megaton of speck right there. Like just ton, or crappie as you guys call them. Just a ton of them. There might be a bass or two mixed in. I fished it for a little bit and came up empty handed. But that's the kind of stuff like you need to mark it. I really use my graph as sort of a, a fishing log because I'm gonna probably come back here and say, hey, you know, do I have any offshore structure they could suspend off during the winter? And, and that's gonna be the deal. Got him. Got him that time. So to keep it down there. I think that's him. Yeah. Is that a spot or a large mouth? That's a large mouth, dude. <laughs> you bonked it once. Oh, chill, chill. And um, dude, I marked these fish and I think they're mixed with spots down there. That's like a pound and a half. Or, but they're in 30 feet, dude. And what's interesting, there's a giant creek that goes back right here. And I think they're kind of setting up to move back into that creek. That was pretty cool. And see them down there on the active target? They're right there. That's freaking cool. Fish on. Got out the swim bait after the underspin. Got the three ace. Look out, bulk. Is that a spot or a large amount? That's the biggest trick. 
that's a spot. I can see them down there, and they're just on this point. I mean, not a big one, dude, but there's there's a whole bunch of them. It's kind of cool. <laughs> I like it. Hashtag first time on the lake. Got them. They're closer to the boat. I thought that feels like a better one. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a big one. Now, is it a spot or a largemouth? That's the trick. That's a smallmouth. Dude, I think that's a smallmouth. <laughs> on the little guy tech on a 3 8 ball head. And I'm, I'm almost sure that's a smallmouth. Yeah. Dude, it's a freaking smallmouth. Are you kidding me? We've caught all three species. That's a grand slam today, dude. That's a big small mouth too. Come here, come here. <laughs> I love them apples, boys. <laughs> Can you say grand slam? Check this out, dude. We caught a freaking three pound small mouth. Look at that thing. <laughs> Are you kidding me, dude? Let's get this thing released here real quick. Go back down there. And then we're gonna talk. Oh, got the camera away. We're gonna wrap this thing up post grand slam. Caught a small mouth spotted bass and a large mouth and we threw a crappie in there for good measure that reminds me always bring your crappie stuff especially in fall a lot of times especially on these lakes that are that are a little steeper pointed you'll find like a brush pile and there'll be crappie we call them speck in florida all over them dude you can catch dinner and catch some bass and have a good time we really focused on getting in like you can see behind me some of these back pockets but the real key was more main lake points but those main lane po main lake points all had something in common they all led to a back pocket like there it just seems like fall is coming a little bit later and those fish even though they they're focused on bait we're going to talk about the lures that we use really quick in a second but they're they're focused on bait they're just not all the way where they're supposed to be but they're on their way and that's something you know we're on a new lake we're adjusting in real time that's something you have to do especially when you're on a new lake or as you get in these transitional periods fall to winter summer to fall all of that so you got to kind of adjust in real time because the fish aren't going to set up you know al lindler style you know they're not always going to be exactly where they should be but they might be going to where they should be so you got to take that into account you know it was all about sort of mimicking the bait you know swim baits we had that that 3 8 ounce with a kai tech the underspin that's a mino a gambler mino right there once again with a kai tech and then the wild card was i changed baits but it's basically a drop shot rig with a quarter ounce that's my ks2 elite that's my favorite spinning rod that's 610 a quarter ounce drop shot with a little pink worm it was a robo worm that we caught some of those fish on and once again that looks more like a bait it's not dark colored it kind of looks like one of those shad or one of those smaller minnows that are sort of potting up in fall but all around a great time bog are you hot dude are you done Yes, you want to go eat some dinner and have some fun? Dinner? Dinner and treats? See how it's eyes open. Thank you guys for coming with me. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. This channel is all about real fishing and grassroots support. And your support will show YouTube what is actually valued content. And that means a lot to me, and I hope that means something to you. So tight lines, we'll see you back out on the water or from the garage talking about lures, patterns, and techniques. We're out. <laughs>